Subscribe to Boxing Guru One TV on YouTube. You with the one and only Boxing Guru for this episode of Under the Microscope. We're gonna focus in on the big fight on April 8th on the Shakur Stevenson, Jared Anderson uh, fight Saturday night. We're going to focus in on Troy versus Roy. Troy Isley versus Roy Berenger. Roy Berenger is a fighter out of my hometown of Toledo, Ohio. This is a, a typical fight for a lot of Toledo boxers who's not uh, promoted or, or signed by a major boxing company like PBC, Top Rank, or The Zone. We got a, some, a lot of our fighters have to get it the hard way. I call it the Paul Parker way. Paul pay-per-view Parker way. Because Paul was called in on the B side and he beat my boy Lonnie B who was signed with Mayweather's promotion. I always talk to Lonnie B and tell him that Paul beat him. And then sometimes a lot of our Toledo fighters can get an opportunity to get big fights like Paul did. Even though he lost against Lonnie B, he was featured in on uh, two or three more major big fights on HBO and for, you know, top fighters, you know what I'm saying? So that was his window and that was his uh, claim to fame and that was an opportunity for him to kick his name in the boxing game. Um, R.B. Uh, Roy Berger definitely has a chance to follow in the footsteps of Paul Parker on uh, April 8th um, on the Shakur fight. This is an important fight for um, R.B. Roy Berger. He has to take this fight like it's his, this is his championship fight. This is his um, last major fight. Roy definitely has to come into um, this fight in dog shape. I really mean dog shape because he's fighting a, a aggressive type of fighter. I like this style matchup between Troy and Roy. It's like the bull versus the matador. Um, Troy is definitely a bull. He's aggressive. He comes forward. He's in your face. He makes you fight. And Roy is definitely a thinker in the ring. He's like to throw calculated shots. But in this fight against Troy... He's definitely going to have to throw that out the window because this bull versus the matador, you definitely has to be in dog shape. That's the first thing Roy has to be in dog shape because he's going to have to use the ring because it's going to be a big ring because Shakur Stevens is headline. Shakur like to use movement and angles and different things. So it's definitely going to be a big ring for Roy to understand this. So he definitely has to be in dog shape against Troy. And he has to be able to produce a, a, a better high work rate than he typically does. Because Roy like to come in and fight at a pace like he want to fight. But Troy, the, uh, the bull is not going to allow that to happen. So that's why being in dog shape is the number one thing for Roy if he want to pull off the victory upset on April the 8th. And then Roy, what he's going to have to do is not be afraid to taunt the bull. It's going to have to be like the running of the bulls. I don't know if y'all saw that uh, show where every year over in Spain, they let out a lot of bulls and it runs down. Fools be running from them. Some of them taunt the bull. Some of them get crushed by the bull. But in this episode, Roy Berenger he cannot be afraid of the bull. He has to taunt the bull. What I mean by that in boxing language is you want to be in front of the bull because you're the matador by flicking a jab out and stepping around the bull, giving him angles so to make the bull turn and it makes the bull think he has a, a false a rush on Roy. If you square up with the bull, the bull going to want to uh, rush in Roy will be able to hit him with a quick one-two and then spin out of there. That's why I mean taunt the bull. And then that will give Roy enough time to circle around the ring, stall a little bit, to let the bull get straightened up again because the bull is definitely going to be coming forward because this is how he fights. And plus, his legendary um, coach and trainer, Al Mitchell, he's definitely going to be implementing this in the fight against uh, R.B. Roy Berenger. So Roy definitely going to have to understand 
the Bulls' uh, mind state and his attitude in that big fight um, coming April 8th. So Roy definitely going to have to be in front of the Bull Tommy by flicking out punches. Roy definitely has to throw two or three shots at a time when he throws his punches because the Bull is definitely going to be hittable because he's going to be aggressive after you taunt him by standing in punching range and making the bull thinking he can land some. But Roy gonna have to be able to use angles in the ring as his friend and understand that he gonna have to do that confidently. And, and that's gonna be a major fight of taking this fight longer. Even if Roy comes up short in his victory because he's the B side, whether he get cheated or lose the fight. But if he does this work, what I'm suggesting and saying, it will play major dividends in the rest of his career because it will show the promoters and other promoters, oh, this guy Roy can fight. Let's put our fighter up against him. He's a good stiff test, and he's on the B side, and we can pay him, you know, small money because he's from the 419 area code because he doesn't have a major promoter behind him. So it's very uh, important that Roy Berenger, Dooney, his coach, Head coach and Lamar, his head coach, understand this. It's not about just April the 8th. It's about future fights for the career of Roy R.B. Barringer. So it's going to be very critical. He used this game plan against the bull. Taunt the bull, be in dog shape, and to use angles. And he has to let his hands go. It may be like a semi-automatic, uh, um, semi-automatic, um, like, um, range and stuff like that. What I meant by that is, okay, when you shoot the jab, boom, boom, shoot the one, two real quick. Sometimes you can't fall in with the right hand because the bull is looking to counter. So it's going to be very critical that Roy understand his range and his distance when he letting his combinations go because he definitely has to let his combination go, but be mindful of keeping range because the bull is coming in forward and he's coming in with his combinations. So it will make it easier for the bull to slip and counter with hooks or body shot. So it's going to be very critical that Roy and his team baits and taunt the bull so the bull can be the aggressor throughout the fight and you can just play the matador, stepping over, stepping around, letting your hands go. And, and then once the bull catches up with you, you go into a shell, a turtle shell in the inside, block, pick off some of the shots because the bull like to throw hooks. He, he loves to double up from the body to the head. So you definitely got to keep a tight guard for the bull when you're on the inside. Plus, that would stop a lot of the bull's momentum coming forward. And then, as the bull is throwing hooks trying to break through your shell, that's where you can slip in your counter hooks and catch him while he's bringing his hands back. So that's going to be very critical on Team RB Roy Barringer if he want to be successful and perform up on a high-level fight against the bull, Troy Isley. Let me say that again. As 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 RD uh, Roy Berenger is on the back foot, giving angles, taunting the bull, the bull going to get real aggressive, Troy Isley. He going to cut the ring off. And when he get close to cutting the ring off, that's when Roy tighten up and go into a turtle shell. Come forward. As he comes forward, keep both arms close up and tighten up. As the bull is digging to the body like he loves to do from his coach, Al uh, uh, Mitchell, and then come to the head, Roy R.D. R.B. going to have an opportunity to come over and counter as, as the bull is bringing his hands back. And that's when R.B. will have a chance to spin out of there and go back to being the matador. He cannot be afraid to do this. To be on the back foot, playing the matador for most of the fight, frustrating and taunting the bull in Troy Isley, and then step to him to meet the bull head on. Cover up, brace yourself, protect yourself with your hands up, and counter when the bull opens up, and then go back to like a stick, right hand, and spin out of there. It's going to be very critical Roy Berenger uses these techniques 
He definitely cannot be flat-footed on his feet in this fight because uh, it would make it too easy for the bull to close distance and too fast for the bull to close distance on him. So Roy definitely going to have to be on his foot. That's why dog shape is number one. Understanding range and distance is number two because you don't want to fall in with your punches and while the bull is coming uh, close to you to be able to counter you with ease. So you're going to have to shoot your punches and go right back on defense. Shoot right hand, one, two, right back on defense because that's going to be very critical because you should expect a hook, a counter from the bull because that is his trademark. And so when Roy understand that, he'll be able to catch some of the hooks and then he, he should be able to come back with his counter. And then when you frustrate the bull, and then as the rounds goes on, now you make it a close inside fight because the bull going to press forward. You're going to get tired of circling and tired of moving. So you're going to have to come forward in a turtle-like shell to block and absorb some of the bull punches with your arms and shoulders and then counter and then go back on the jab. That's the whole game plan to being successful and defeating the bull on April the 8th. Roy versus Troy. These are the words for the one and only boxing guru. This video is for keys to victory for Roy Berenger against Troy Isley. Subscribe to me if you want more of the Boxing Guru Show. Come get it. 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 Come get it.